Hi, my name is Uwem Akwan. I have an encouragement for you today. And that is, God loves you. There is nothing you can do about it. Yeah, he loves you. There is nothing you can do about it. You cannot make him stop loving you. You cannot do anything to make him not to love you again. You know why? Because the Bible says, God commended his love towards us while we were yet sinners. So when we were at our worst, Christ loved us at our worst. Which means there's nothing you can do in life. There's nothing at all that you can do to make him to not love you anymore. There's nothing you can ever do again that will make him not to love you. He cannot change his mind. You cannot change his mind towards loving you. Your actions, your drama, whatsoever you want to do cannot change his mind from loving you. God cannot stop loving you. He commended that love to you while you were a yes, sinner. While we as humanity were all sinners. The Bible says God so loved the world. The soul is an intensifier to, to, to qualify this love that God has given to us. That is not just a mere love. It's not the love that you profess to someone and can't keep up with the commitment. But this is what God did. The Bible says God so loved the world. How? In that he sent his only begotten son. So for God to give up Christ for us as the world, for sinners, us who didn't deserve him, us who do not deserve anything good, us who deserve death, us who fell short of the standard of God, human. That's why David said, why are you so mindful of me? Why are you so mindful of me, O God? You know, God is so mindful of us. He loves us because he has potentials hidden inside of us that he made us to be. The Bible says we will be created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God has already planned before time for us to walk into and live. So God so loves you and there's nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. There's nothing on earth that you can do to stop God from loving you. I say it again, there's nothing in all of eternity that you can do to stop God from loving you. His love for you is constant. It cannot change. It cannot become higher or lower. And that is it. It is settled. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. All you need to do is to believe in that love, to believe he does love you. Like he said, you may have heard religious voices and thoughts and things said that makes you feel like God doesn't love you and makes you feel like God is out to get you. No, that is not God's voice. It is clearly written. He is sought for you when you didn't seek for him. He sought and found you when you were in your in your mess. All of us were in our mess. While we were yet sinners, we never had a view of God. We never knew about God. We didn't solicit for his love. There was no man that went somewhere to stay and start making prayers. Oh God, start love us. Send your love. No, we didn't make any prayer or petition for God to love us. But that is his nature. That is his heart. He loved us. He gave himself for us. Paul said, out of experiencing the love of God, he said, the life I live now is by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that should be our posture. When we come to a place of realizing there's nothing we can do to make God not to love us, there's no amount of sin that we can commit to make God stop loving us. It's for us to fall down on our knees and say, Lord, thank you for loving me. And today, I no longer live. It is you that live in me. My life, I live by faith in you who love me and give yourself. That is where you should go to. The sun shines, but you cannot have control over how the sun should shine or over how hot the sun should be. The only thing for you to do to experience the sun is to get under it. If the sun shines and you're under a shape, you cannot experience the effects of the sun. So for you to experience the effects of the sun, you have to get under it. So for you to experience God's love, it's a gift. You don't do anything to deserve it. All you need to do is to receive it and believe receive by believing. You receive the love by believing. Just like you receive the effect of the sun by getting one that So get under God's love because you can't have sin it. So but you can receive it. And you can ignore it if you wish. But such love is too wonderful for you to want to ignore. And God has so much dreams for you. God has so much vision for you. God has so much for you that he wants to accomplish in your life. And it's like Will you walk with me? Will you align with me? I already love you. I already chose you. I already called you mine. So it's a gift. You see this gift today. I know that there's nothing you can do about it that God loves you. You can't change it. You can't stop him from loving you. You can't send him away. <laughs> 
Yeah, religious leaders gonna mess up a lot of religious people. Yeah, you cannot see it away. Which is why the thief at the cross received Jesus and got into paradise. Had it been, he could have seen it away. That would have been the end for him because it would, it would have been too late. But you can't see it away. And this is not a license to for you to live licentious and say, okay, maybe at the dying minutes I will go to receive God. No, realizing someone loves you this much when you were trying on your own to prove your love for him. This is a relief. This is a relief for a true child of God. It's not licentiousness. It's a relief for a true child of God. When you were trying to beat yourself up and, and try to, to deserve God's love, trying to earn that love, when you were trying to do everything possible to get into God's good book, not realizing that your name was already there. So it was as if you were fighting for what for the battle that has already been won. You were trying to get on a good book that your name has already been written inside. You don't need to try on your own to fight to get there. You are already there. You are seated in Christ in the heavenly places. You are loved. You are accepted. The Bible says you are accepted in the beloved. Let this bless you. Let this encourage you. Let this make you run to your father because his hands is open. Check the story of the prodigal son. He's messed up. He told you that. You know, since you're not dead, let me get a portion of my own inheritance. You know, go go ahead and live my life. And he went ahead and squandered everything. And that's the story of me and you. God met us. But we said to him, no, since you gave me choice, now let me exercise the choice. And we went ahead with our choices and did all manner of things that we wanted to do. And, and I messed up most of the time. Messed up bad for some of us. But all of us messed up. And then prodigal son after realizing himself and realizing that he is now suffering that he has a father as he came bible says he came to himself why should i be suffering that even servants in my father's house are getting good food to eat and i'm eating with pigs no that, that, that's bad i'm eating in a place of death so you find yourself sitting in depression sitting in a heavy death that's like you have a father who loves you you have a father whom people that don't even know him is still providing for them provide for everyone the same good and the bad so but you can get more if god is providing for everyone in the world believer or not then you as a believer how how else will he treat you so the prodigal son came to himself and said I will return to my father. He reads his speech and all he was going to tell the father. But the father was not interested in all those speeches. When he went back, the father was already waiting for him to show I was ready to just come back. And that is the heart of the father, the heavenly father towards you. He is waiting. He's not like our heavenly father. Oh, it's okay. You as a child decided to deny me as a father. Okay, don't ever come back to my house. God is not like that. He was waiting. And when the son came, the Bible story is so beautiful. And the father started running towards this child who has been reckless. And which is why we can say such love that God has for us is reckless. <laughs> it's reckless love. He loves, he loved sinners. He loved us when while we were yet sinners. The father started running to him, gave him a hug, gave him a kiss, changed his dress, gave him a ring, gave him shoes to wear, showed him acceptance. That's the heart of your heavenly father to you today. And I want you to know that he loves you and he wants the best for you. What would you rather do than to come into his arms and receive this love with open hearts and open arms, allow him to embrace you, come into this beautiful embrace. There's nothing more beautiful than this. There's nothing more rewarding than this. Then let this love then become what constrains you to do the will of God. Not you trying by yourself effort to fight to do. You don't need to deserve it. It's undeserving grace. It's undeserving. So now get on that is love of God and allow it to pour like rain over you. I hope this has blessed you. I would like you to share this to anyone who would want to hear this encouragement, who you think may need this encouragement. If it has encouraged you or believe it's going to encourage someone else, share this video. It would be my pleasure for you to subscribe to my channel if you so wish or you see fit too. So thank you. God bless you. See you in the next video. Bye.